Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Welcome to this nice mild day today and not a hot one at all and not like when we were here uh, just last week and we spent an hour digging up the back there in the back paddock around the uh, the cricket pitch and it was 34 degrees. Uh, a real scorcher, actually got sunburnt that day. So as you can see, we've had a bit of flash flooding too. Uh, you know, summertime uh, with heavy rain, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, we are back here for round two today and uh, guess what just popped out? As I said, we had a nice run of silver coins there the other week and I think it's going to happen again today. We have a beautiful early English uh, sixpence there, 1906, a nice wreath around the outside, a fabulous stuff. He sort of rang up a real high signal. I missed, uh, missed getting the camera out for this guy. However, as soon as he flung out of the hole, I thought, wow, what a cracker. What a way to start the video. We have a few other coins in the pouch already. I'm a bit out of sorts today too. I left my mind lab pouch and gloves at home in the shed. So we're uh, using the uh, the older gloves and the old detected pouch that we have and we keep there in the car spare for the boys. So anyway, we're going to continue and uh, I have high hopes for today. We're going to continue running around here and then jump back into the paddock where we did not spend all that much time last week. Let's see what else we can find today, shall we? Hopefully a few more nice silver coins. Ha, huh, there we have it. Another nice coin. We're only a step or two away from where we got that beautiful early sixpence there too, the English sixpence. So we're gonna be on a run of coins today. It's not gonna be the longest hunt because I've got a few uh, jobs to do this afternoon at home. However, uh, I think if we're having success like this straight off the bat, it's gonna be a good hunt at that. A 1951 Australian half rue penny ring up high uh, quite nice and high so check out all the rain we've had isn't that phenomenal you know uh, here we are in summertime uh, January and we're getting all this rain you know I think we had like 60 uh, 65 mil in an hour there the other day it was just phenomenal so uh, as I said here we are summertime we're getting all this rain it's certainly going to make it a little bit easier digging isn't it Rightio, so we're in the school grounds now and uh, just sort of walked over to pick up this beer can laying on the surface, uh, which then led me to a target right below it. And we were rewarded, it was a 19 a 20 on the Equinox there, and we were rewarded with a beautiful early uh, Cedar Britannia, early English penny. So, as I said, 19 20, a target ID numbers on the Equinox there. What a bloody ripper! A nice early English penny, as I said, uh, everything coming out here last week has sort of been from, you know, late 18, uh, early 1900, sort of nothing past 1950. Uh, very similar to the, the old football club rooms uh, where we did down uh, down there a while ago and got all those wonderful silver coins. I think what uh, what we do, three visits, and we got about 40 odd silver coins and nothing uh, past 1950. So awesome stuff, a bit of research really pays off. So next dig, and uh, we've got a little religious pendant by the looks, uh, nothing on the front there. It's got quite nice uh, ornate design around the, around the edge there, it's sort of like a wreath. And on the back there, uh, I do believe uh, it's got some religious markings, so need to clean him up a lot more. Uh, I've found a few of these uh, similar in the past, so I'm not quite sure what was in the center of this guy, whether it be a pitcher or, you know, some sort of stone or something like a fake stone. I don't know. I don't know. What a ripper of a piece, though. Into the pouch, one to clean up once home and one to show, one more to show at the end for the conclusion video. So, what a ripper! Well then, uh, this sounds good, doesn't it? 24, 25. Please let it be a beautiful silver coin. Hello, that uh, nice early English uh, silver we got there just last week. That was an absolute ripper. A silver English shilling. And uh, something that I didn't really expect to pop out, you know, it was sort of our last dig too. I think it was our last dig. And we started the day off with a florin. So that hour that we spent here last week, we had such a good hour. I think we've been here for about an hour already today. We've got a few coins to show for it. However, not as, uh, not as consistent as last week. Uh, not as good just yet, so still waiting. Oh dear, it's a silver. Uh, tell you what, there I was just jinxing myself saying not as good as last week. And uh, we're still on it though. We are still on those silver coins. What a bloody ripper. I don't care how big they are really. Uh, whether it be a big florin, a shilling, a little thrippence. As long as I see silver, I'm like a pirate. As long as I see silver, I am a happy man. A little 1943 wheat thrippence. What a bloody ripper. Let's give him a bit of a clean up on the back there. And have a look how good the condition is on the back. Oh, hey George. Wow. 
That's awesome, awesome. I always wonder, you know, like Doug, thousands of coins over the years. Always still wonder though, you know, it never sort of wears off that excitement of the silver coins. And it always sort of makes me wonder, you know, who dropped that a coin? You know, were they rich? Were they poor? Uh, did they eat that night? Did they pay their rent that week? Uh, to pay their bills, you know? Especially when you find something like a big florin, uh, one florin, two shillings. That was worth 24 uh, pennies back in the day, 24 pence. Uh, so to lose a one florin, two shillings was quite a bit of money not something you wanted to lose even that little thrippence there that would have bought you quite a bit too back in the day so i tell you what this back corner of the paddock seems to be where it's at a little 1943 wheat thrippence coming out of that hole there a bingo we got a, a quite a silent 19 really uh, it was sort of a bit hard to distinguish i nearly wasn't going to dig it but look what just popped out another silver coin they are getting bigger basil that is awesome thrippence sixpence we're going to get a florin today. I just feel it in my bones. If we don't, though, that's okay. Because I'll tell you what, with all these wonderful silver coins coming out, I am happy anyway. And look, at the end of the day, even with no silver coins coming out, I'd still be happy because I'm out here with Saviour, enjoying the day. And uh, let's face it, uh, after working all week, it's nice to get out and do something different. Like, I've had a big week at work this week. So, uh, you know, to be out here with Save, I'm watching him catch butterflies. And I'm detecting pulling these silver coins. What a way uh, to relax and spend the weekend a couple of days off from work. Awesome stuff. Next target, uh, we've been searching for this guy for quite a while too. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, gritting up uh, this area where we uh, sort of last shot our clip. It was well up the back there. So we've done a lot of laps uh, up and back to get to this point here. So let's see what we got. I'm sort of uh, really starting to doubt uh, the fact that I'll get a florin here today. However, we are having a lot of success on the coins, on the silver coins especially. Uh, let's see what we've got here. I've sort of lost him, throwing him around out of the hole. There he is. We've got another little silver coin. What were you we just saying? What a bloody ripper. 23 on the Equinox this guy was. I probably should have filmed him from the start. However, as I said, uh, we've really worked for this guy. Up and back, up and back. Uh, digging a few bits of rubbish. Nothing spectacular. 1942. A little wheat thrippence this time. Wow, awesome. What's that? Four, five, six silver coins again today. Uh, we are killing it. Today, uh, or this year, I should say, uh, 2022. I mean, we're, we're only just coming into the end of January. So this year, we are absolutely killing it. I might even have to do a tally up, a roundup of all the silver coins I've found uh, just for the month of January. It's amazing. Bloody amazing. So we've got a little bit going on here. Uh, as you can hear, one signal there. And we move over, we've got another signal there. Notice how both of them are 22s. There's nothing in the middle. See how they disappear? So one is clearly right there. Perfect. And one is right there without even pinpointing. So, and nothing in the middle. So both 22, uh, I'm sort of thinking, you know, a kid has been running across here because uh, it is still modern used oval, you know, it's still used today. Uh, it's a very, very old oval, original to the school. However, it is still used today. So I dare say a kid's probably ran flat out across here with two $1 coins in his pockets and dropped them. Or maybe uh, that being so uh, with an old pre-decimal coin spill. Let's have a look, fingers crossed. It's pre-decimal! Ha! It is two. There's one. There's a penny. Uh, fingers crossed is sort of what I was saying is uh, would be older. I don't mind finding the gold coins, let's face it. Uh, however, I love finding the old stuff. The old pre-decimals is really where it's at for me. And look, I did say that I was going to uh, unearth some $5,000 of gold coins this year and fill up that oil container. However, I do not think we're going to be able to uh, do that much. Uh, just sort of thinking about it the other night, thinking... Uh, we'll probably only get about 3,000, not 5,000. I think we'll be pushing it. Wow, bingo, two pennies. Look at that, what a bloody ripper. Uh, as I was saying, some kids probably run across here with coins in his pocket. There's number one. Let's have a look, zoom in. Nice early a Commonwealth there. You can see on the back, uh, well you can barely see on the back. And on the, on the other side here, you can see the one penny once it focuses. What a ripper, that's number one. Let's have a look at number two. He should be also an early type at Commonwealth of Australia. And he is too, uh, in better condition though. I'm struggling to wipe 
the dirt off these and that rain that we've had has just sort of stuck made the dirt stick to the coins what a ripper two one pennies in a row and uh, as easy as uh, digging them out and saving them for future what a bloody ripper this paddock is the best isn't it it's like a pre-decimal paddock i think we'll call it Okay, so we are nearly done and nearly about to finish our paddock, finish our run, I should say, really, uh, in the paddock. Uh, so we sort of made uh, our way from the back corner there where that little tree is. Uh, we've been gritting uh, back and forth all day. Uh, well, when I say all day, I probably mean about two hours we've been here. Not too bad at all. So from those tree lines there, back and forth, as I said, uh, gritting this paddock. And we've made our way to here. As you can see, we're not far away from the next fence line. So we're going to go up and back a few more runs, a few more times. We'll hit the track and the fence and we'll call it a day. So not too much at all. However, just before we'll finish this run, uh, look at what we got out. Beautiful little 1910 Australian Thrippens. I tell you what, they did not get much better than this, you know. I was really hoping for that florin today. However, if we do not find it, the fact that uh, I've pulled out so many wonderful silver coins uh, already, and now this guy, I just think is fantastic. So, uh, you know, to go out and get a silver in a day, I think is a good day. To go out and get five, six, or whatever, uh, multiple silver coins is even better. So, Edward on the back, fascinating stuff, really great condition to uh, this nice early coin a lot of the early wheat uh, wheat thrippences or so uh, coat of arm thrippences i should say uh, they're generally very worn uh, even the wheat ones too uh, however obviously being in circulation for longer uh, the earlier they are generally the the uh, the more worn they are so uh, if that makes sense the more worn they are so anyway really cool 1910 a little australian early coat of arms thrippence it does not get much earlier than that uh, when you're looking for australian pre-decimal coins as i stated before uh, everything was starting to be minted here in australia from 1910 onwards so let's keep going let's see uh, what three four more runs let's see if i can nail that florin i doubt it but fingers crossed so we're down near the trees now and uh, we've got our next target, uh, quite an interesting piece too. Uh, I've dug a lot of coins and whatnot out of this back paddock, however I do not know why this is here. We've got the old shaver handle, <laughs> what a ripper, what a ripper. A kind of a uh, bit of an ornate design on it too, got the two notches down the bottom near my little finger and you can see where the head, the shaving head has broken off up the top with the remaining thread left so awesome stuff and maybe some kid uh, brought his shaver here to school uh, to have a shave with so <laughs> really cool we've got a few shaver handles at home too i'll we'll probably be able to match and uh, marry up and put on display so he's a complete shaver in the display case really cool on to the next okay we've made it we've made it to the track and to the fence we really can't do anything on the track of course uh, this gravel's only just been freshly put here too in the last six months or so because i know that coming here a couple of years ago the first time i ever did this paddock uh, basically we sort of ran a uh, grid up and down uh, this area uh, sort of not at the back you know that's why the last two times i've been here i've been concentrating my tie at the back because we've done more at the front here I do have a signal under there that I've missed, however, we're never going to get underneath that gravel track again, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, I found so many wonderful coins under there, including a few uh, thrippences, uh, sixpences, even a nice early Australian a coat of arms shilling. So a bit of a shame, but nice to know too uh, that they've also been saved out of there before that gravel's been placed down. It's like a walking track or something now. So anyway, no little signal there. Uh, who knows if we missed any under the gravel there which who knows we probably did we probably did uh, why is this guy still here if we've detected here before it's always the case you can return to these sites over and over and over again and still be pulling out coins so really cool and that uh that can go uh that can be due to many different things you know the ground uh, the day uh you know the settings that you're using basically which way you hold your tongue uh it can be due to many different things so i dare say we've probably just walked over this bloke and probably just missed him in all the excitement of finding all those other wonderful coins here that day. I dare say he's going to be a thrippin' so. And we've got him out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is going to finish us off for today too. What a bloody ripper. Let's hope we didn't leave any more under the track. Ha! Huh. Nice, nice. Another silver coin. And that is what's going to end us for today. It's going to be a wheat thrippence, 1938. That's our third wheat thrippence today. We've got a 43, 42, and now a 38. 
magnificent stuff so awesome awesome anyway that is about it for us today guys i said that is our last target and uh we've met the truck met the fence so we'll get back to the car now i do a quick round up a quick clean up of all the coins we've got out today and uh shoot a conclusion i give you a look at what we've saved a magnificent stuff six seven silver coins oh, i forget i've lost count uh, we'll go do a count up in a minute so anyway we'll see you at the car Okay, so that is about it for us today, guys. Uh, we've basically got everything packed up and uh, ready to take you through a look at what we did today. It was not the longest day. Uh, you know, we only spent there the other week about an hour hunting here, and today we spent about two hours. So three hours all up. I'll tell you what, uh, we've had some fascinating finds. I'll throw the video up uh, of last week up in the top left corner. If you've not gave it a watch, uh, be sure to give it a look, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, seeing all the wonderful coins coming out just like today. So anyway, I'll take you through a look at the top there, all around rubbish that we got out also and uh, removed from the back of the school oval for the kids uh, starting with the beer can that we picked up the tech screw half the key uh, the old builder's ruler there and a few other miscellaneous items few bottle tops and this guy actually i uh, will say he was a 26 27 and uh, i figured he uh, he was going to be a florin i figured that was going to be my florin for the day however he wasn't so never mind you got to dig the trash to get that treasure out so we've got the old shaver handle here what a bloody ripper he is uh, moving down uh, starting from the bottom today uh, we've got the three one cent coins the little pendant i dare say is a religious pendant although he's got nothing uh, to really identify uh, being a religious pendant however he looks very similar to some of the ones i've found in the past so jumping up uh, leaving the silver coins behind i uh, save the best to the last and we'll move on to the pennies here we got the 1922, a one penny there, the 1911 beside him. Uh, funnily enough, we got a 1911, a one penny there last week hunting here, and uh, pretty much in very similar condition, in cracker condition, just like that guy. So awesome stuff. When we went and picked up uh, the beer can there, uh, we did strike on the Britannia penny here too. So quite nice to be finding uh, some early uh, pre-decimal coinage here. Uh, really really nice in fact especially the sixpence down below which we'll get to in a minute we've got the uh, rue penny and two half rue pennies below uh, beside i should say 1942 wheat thrippence uh, 1943 wheat thrippence below and uh, 1953 sixpence beside him uh, this guy here we're just speaking about the 1906 uh, early english sixpence now he's a bloody cracker and I'll tell you what, I sort of wasn't expecting one of these guys to pop out, you know, just like the a nice early English shilling there we got last week. That was quite the surprise. So 1910, a little Australian uh, thrippence there, and a wheat thrippence, Australia wheat thrippence beside him. A little bit later, that guy, a 38, 1938. So really, really cool. I'll just pick this one up here one more time and give you a look, because I just think he's a great coin. And 1910, a little early Australian thrippence coat of arms and uh, as I said before one of the earliest coins that we started minting here in Australia uh, from 1910 onwards so uh, he is a really nice early one so very very cool uh, that is about it for us today guys uh, we will be back hunting again very soon and uh, I want to bust out those vanquishers very soon and go do a bit of coin hunting I had a bloke there ask me a while ago uh, could you do a coin hunt with the vanquish 540 or you know the vanquish in general and that is exactly what I'm going to do so I think one of my next videos very shortly very soon will be hunting out there with the vanquish hitting on a few of those coins and we're going to try and work out the best settings uh you know to try and find them so anyway guys that is about it for us today as i said be sure to hit that like comment subscribe button below and i hope to catch you there on my next adventure so cheers guys happy hunting we'll see you next time